Hello! In this video, we're going to be laying out some of the important uh, terms and vocabulary and ideas for a new unit as we get into talking about energy sources. Uh, very soon, uh, we will be working on a project where you're going to kind of choose uh, an energy source, something like uh, wind power, solar power, fossil fuels, nuclear, uh, and kind of investigate how it works and some of the details. So in this video, we're going to go over some of the general uh, broad ideas about how we kind of uh, measure, quantify these things, do some physics with them. Uh, and that will take us into the kind of looking at how we, how we draw energy from the world around us. All right, there are two uh, categories we, we use to discuss uh, sources of energy. The first is a primary energy source, and this is a... A source that you find in nature. So there's been no conversion or refinement or anything like that. So you can go dig up a lump of coal. Uh, that would be a primary energy source. It has some energy within it, some kind of chemical energy. Uh, wind is a thing that can deliver energy and it's just naturally occurring. Uh, uranium even, you can also basically dig up. Uh, okay, so something that hasn't been converted Whereas there are secondary sources, which uh, come from transforming a primary source, usually for convenience of consumption. Electricity is the big secondary energy source. Electricity uh, is, is something that we generate using other forms of energy. Usually it's like mechanical energy causing something to spin uh, and through some electromagnetic effects that makes electricity. Gasoline as well is, is refined oil. Um, so both of those would be secondary energy sources. So that's what we mean when we say primary and secondary energy. Uh, here's an example of a coal-fired power plant where you have coal, which would be the primary fuel. That's, you know, just raw material that we find that has some energy in it. And there you go, about 30% of it makes it to electrical energy to our secondary source, some, some heat loss. So that's kind of the idea. We're going to look at this type of diagram in a moment. All right, uh, the other like big category you need to know is renewable and non-renewable. It's basically what it sounds like, but here's the uh, kind of official definition. Uh, a renewable source of energy can be replenished in a relatively short time, which is obviously a uh, sort of relative thing, but usually we say scale of the human lifetime or it's continually generated. Uh, whereas a non-renewable source uh, would take a very, very long, like a geologically long period to be replenished. So here you go. This is the list um, that you want to pretty much know. You know, wind would be a, a good example of a renewable source because the wind blows uh, and, and it's not like you can use up the wind and then there won't be any more wind. Um, whereas basically fossil fuels and even nuclear, we, we say is non-renewable. Um, because, you know, there is more or less a, a finite amount of uranium on the planet Earth that doesn't, doesn't replenish in any reasonable amount of time. Okay. Um, of course, we talk a lot about energy transformation. We, we've thought about this before. The really interesting thing is basically every single source of energy on the planet comes from the sun one time or another. Uh, all of the energy you use in your everyday life, all of the energy in your body came from the sun. You know, the sun uh, shines on the planet. Uh, the sun is what causes like wind to blow because some parts of the planet are warmer and some parts are cooler and the wind will blow based on a temperature difference. Um, sunlight causes, you know, plants to grow, the plants grow. We eat plants, animals eat plants, dinosaurs ate plants, dinosaurs got like exploded by a big meteor or something, dinosaurs got buried under the earth, decomposed over millions of years, now there's a bunch of oil down there. The energy in that oil came from the dinosaurs, which came from the plants, which ultimately came from the sun. Everything comes from solar. Uh, except for a few very other small sources of energy. Uh, they're is like tidal energy between um, the sun and the moon and the, and the earth as we all pull on each other. 
a little bit of like tidal stuff that we can talk about. There's some tidal power that you can harness. Uh, nuclear energy is kind of its own thing. So like uranium doesn't officially come from the sun. So you could argue it probably came from another star at some point. Uh, but it doesn't come from the sun so that, you, you know, you can dig up uranium and that radioactive material has its own energy sort of divorced from the energy of the sun. And the Earth has its own internal thermal energy because the Earth is warm. The Earth is a couple hundred Kelvin. Uh, so we have geothermal heat as well from the, uh, you know, hot center of the Earth. And then the heat underneath, like the crust, you can uh, harness a little bit of that heat. Um, but these things make up a very small fraction, the vast, vast, vast majority. All of the energy sources you're going to look at, with the exception of nuclear, come from ultimately the radiated energy of the sun. Uh, so depending on what you have, you may look at how that happens. One other term you're going to need is energy density. Um, and this is a term that like is usually used um, pretty loosely, maybe. The IB being the IB is going to be very nitpicky and specific. There's two different things. All right, energy density, uh, officially being density, that would mean it's a per volume thing. So energy density talks about how much energy is in a certain amount of fuel or material. So you could have a gallon of gasoline and you could say, within that gallon of gasoline, how many joules of energy could you pull out of it? That would be energy density. Uh, you know, you do joules per gallon, which is uh, an energy per volume. Uh, of course, our base units then will be joules per cubic meter. So energy density is energy per volume. But if you're dealing something with something like coal, um, which is, you know, like a solid, you might not talk about it in terms of its volume, you might talk of it in terms of its mass. If you talk about it in terms of its mass, you will call it specific energy. Just like specific heat capacity is like a per kilogram thing, specific energy is a per kilogram thing. So they're very, very similar. Most places you look, even very official places, um, will usually just use energy density generically. And they'll talk about energy density in joules per kilogram. Uh, if you ask the IB, that is not officially correct. And the IB is all about being officially correct. So they will ask you to make a distinction between energy density, which is joules per volume, and specific energy, which is joules per mass. Conceptually, they're both measuring basically the same exact thing. You have a certain amount of stuff, how much energy is stored in that stuff. Uh, so you'll look at this. This is one of the things that depending on the material you, you choose, uh, you'll see like what kind of energy density or specific energy you have. Um, it is pretty amazing, but nuclear is like not even close uh, to the others, it is way more dense in terms of energy uh, because of the nature of the way that we draw energy by splitting the atom. Um, so uh, there's a little goofy cartoon that gives you graphic. Say gasoline has 46 million joules per kilogram. So if you have a kilogram of gasoline, um, that would be 46 million joules of energy you could theoretically pull out of it. Whereas if you have a kilogram of coal, you could pull out 24 million joules. Sugar, of course, has energy. You could pull out 19. And uranium, you could pull out 76 million million joules. It's just insanely more uh, dense in terms of the energy content. Um, notice here, even they use joules per kilogram for energy density. Uh, if we were being nerdy, we would probably say uh, yeah, that should officially be uh, specific energy. All right, but uh, nuclear by far, 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 far is way more uh, jam-packed with energy than anything else. All right, one type of problem they'll have you do is like energy density or specific energy problems. These are really just factor label method problems. So this, this is uh, an IB problem. Um, so we could do, here's the specific energy of gasoline. So it's got, you know, 44 million joules of energy in every kilogram of gasoline. So if I want to use some of that energy, I want to hit the gas in the car and accelerate up to 27 meters per second. How much actual gasoline will I burn? That's a question we can figure out. Um, all right, so using the ideas of 
conservation of energy plus uh, the, the kind of units of specific energy. See if you can give this a shot. Go ahead and you know pause the video, try it out, see if you can work out how much energy you would need, and then use the energy, energy uh, specific energy to see what the mass would be. And we'll walk through the solution here. All right, here we go. Let's look at how you would solve this. Uh, of course, we can always guess method it. So let's look at what we're given. We're given the specific energy. Be careful with the units. Let's turn that mega into what it really means, which is it means times 10 to the 6. Um, I'm given the mass of the car. I'm given the final uh, velocity. I need to know how much gas. Uh, I need to know the mass of the gas. All right, so that can sort of help me think about what I need to do to solve. Um, I know that we can do this. I can do the specific energy times the mass of the fuel. That'll give me the energy provided. If I do 44 million joules per kilogram, well, if I had, you know, two kilograms of gasoline, I would multiply those and I would have 88 million joules of energy. So this is where the mass of the gas is going to come in. So what we need then is to figure out how much energy is being provided. Is this number we know? This is the number we're trying to find. So how much energy is actually do we need? Well, we're going to need to think about energy and work work energy never ever ever will go away uh, they are super fundamental to physics so we got to think about how much work does it take how much energy needs to be transferred to accelerate a car up to the speed uh, well we are trying to basically give it kinetic energy we're changing its energy we're adding kinetic energy from rest so it's change in kinetic energy is what we need to find so we're going to use one half mv squared. I plug this in that tells me how much kinetic energy the car has gained and that should be the amount of energy that we need to pull out of the gasoline. Putting that all together we get something like this. I find the kinetic energy over here. I divide by specific energy and there we go. 12 grams! 12 little grams of gasoline should be enough to get you uh, up to 27 meters per second. All right, so that's how you'll usually use these numbers. Uh, a lot of times you're doing stuff with work and power and then just the, the actual specific energy or the energy density really just adds another step where you're sort of factor labeling. So use the units to help out as always. All right, one more thing that you will make for your energy source and you will see all over IB tests and stuff is a special kind of diagram called the Sankey diagram. And this shows Efficiency. This basically shows efficiency of a energy conversion system. Um, because we know realistically, like we saw in the beginning, uh, you can never, when you transform energy from one type to another, when you're trying to like generate electricity, say, you will never get all of the energy out of your primary source and turn it into your secondary source of energy. There's always going to be losses, uh, usually heat, and we call that degraded energy, uh, the energy that you lose in a transformation process. So here are the different like aspects of a Sankey diagram. We are going to have the input energy on the left, usually from a primary source. Um, the degraded energy we show with arrows pointing down. And if there's multiple like ways that you lose energy, you want to include multiple arrows. So we'll look at that. And then the useful work, the output, uh, comes out on the right. The thing with these is we draw them to scale. So a lot of times you'll do this like on graph paper. So here's some examples. Um, all right, this is a uh, engine, like a car engine or something. So the width of the arrows represents like proportions. So uh, I believe this is one, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, yep, ten wide. So we see, you know, ten units in. We could say like a thousand joules of energy comes in as chemical energy and gasoline. Um, some energy is lost. Uh, through the exhaust process so you lose like maybe 120 joules of energy here and you can see they've drawn this to scale this is like you know one big block and then a little one so that, that's about 120 if that's a thousand um all the moving parts of the engine you know there's friction and kinetic energy there and all that so you lose about 540 joules uh, in moving the engine and 340 is what actually makes it to the like motion of the car itself uh, so, 
you can see in the Sankey diagram, it's a very clear illustration of here's how much we have on the input, here's how much useful output we have, here's all the waste. And it's a really good picture of efficiency. We can see here the efficiency would be like 34%, which is about right for a combustion engine. Um, so it gives you a good, a good picture of efficiency and where the energy goes and, and comes from. All right, one other thing that you will uh, be asked to do either on the IB exam or in, uh, say, a project is to outline the energy transformations that take place. So, you know, what are all of the conversions that take place in this process? So, for example, um, we could look at, say, gasoline is, is the one we've been looking at. Um, so where does that ultimately come from? We want to remember it comes from the sun. Uh, it really does. The sun shines down and through the process of photosynthesis becomes chemical energy stored in plants that chemical energy then is compressed over geological periods of time millions of years uh, and eventually gets uh, you know these plants uh, perhaps compress themselves or you know get eaten by dinosaurs or whatever um, turns into chemical energy but the compressed biomatter oil or natural gas and then things like this and so chemical energy is stored in those fossil fuels we take the fossil fuels and burn them uh, creating thermal energy which it turns out uh, you will look at some details here but that that heat is used to create steam the steam is used to spin a turbine and the turbine is used to generate electricity so you want to be able to talk about the different energy transformations that take place in your uh your system uh, and this is the kind of thing that you would want to do so remember when you talk about energy transformation it's always the type of energy so you know thermal energy to kinetic energy kinetic energy to kinetic energy just of different things kinetic energy to electrical energy. all right so this is what we would typically do as an exit ticket but just as a way to wrap up um you know, we calculated 12 grams of gasoline is what it would take to explain the car. Uh, now, realistically, that value is smaller than how much you would really need. If I your car is totally empty and I came, out, came along with a little thimble of gasoline and I put it in into your engine um, and, you know, assume that the engine can, can get all that and uh, burn it all up and accelerate the car, it still would not be quite enough. You wouldn't hit that 20 whatever meters per second that we said. The why, the question is why. Take a moment, reflect on it, and you can go ahead and pause, and we'll talk about it. All right, so of course the idea here is efficiency. Uh, the 12 grams of gasoline would go on the input side. So that amount of energy would really be like the input to our Sankey diagram. And in a combustion engine, we would expect like really only about 34% of that would come out. So we would kind of need to uh, take efficiency into account to go backwards and figure out, okay, I need that much energy here, so I need like triple that. Uh, so you probably need, you know, ballpark something like 30 or 40 grams of gasoline instead. Uh, so, you know, that could come up in a problem to efficiency, and just like when we did them in the mechanics unit, you would need to consider efficiency in the problem. But there you go. Those are the basic ideas of... Uh, especially, you know, specific energy, energy density, primary, secondary, and Sankey diagrams. Those are the main things that you will need as we get started with this unit and start looking at different systems of exactly how we harness the, the energy around us. So we will get into it with a project. Uh, have fun.